values for these items are computed dynamically. That is at the point where you make the choice. And they can be influenced actually by the context. Um, and that changing the attention uh, to, uh, for example, health aspects of the choice can make um, a difference in the valuation. Yeah? And for that, uh, I will also come uh, to an example a bit later. So what we did in the study is uh, compare, um, and these were again real products, yeah? so these were real information from the vendors uh, of, uh, of these products, uh, and we presented um, uh, products either with these purely numeric information or with an numeric information like this GDA label, but together with a salient signal um, according to uh, dietary guidelines that uh, this is something that is perhaps not as healthy and this is something that uh, you can eat more of. So um, the uh, experiment was again very similar. Okay. Uh, so uh, participants came to us um, uh, to the lab, uh, 35 people, uh, 100 different food products, um, 50 were high caloric and 50 low caloric, or if it's healthy or unhealthy. Um, and then we presented the products either with traffic light labels or with the numeric information. Yeah. Um, so uh, if uh, the participants are able to retrieve the important information just from this numeric information here, then you shouldn't see a difference in the behavior. Yeah. Um, but if they rely actually on these colorful signals, uh, then you might see a difference uh, actually in the behavior. So again, for all of these products, uh, they uh, made a bid, how much they were willing to pay for that, um, and in the end, five of them were drawn and they received it and had to pay for it. So when we look at the behavior, um, what we see is that these traffic light labels somehow uh, in, um, yeah, increase the difference between healthy and unhealthy items. Yeah. Uh, so here on the left side, you can probably not see that this uh, states healthy or low caloric. Yeah. Um, and here for the traffic light labels, the participants are willing to pay more for the healthy items than for the just numeric uh, labeled uh, products. And for the unhealthy items, they are willing to pay uh, less than, uh, than if they were just labeled with the numeric information. Yeah, so this kind of strengthens uh, the effect um, of the label. Um, and if we now uh, look at the, the, at the brain data, um, we again see that it is again the same region, the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, that you know very well know. Um, and uh, this region is again related to the willingness that uh, the subjects were willing to pay for each product. Um, but now what we were interested in is how actually these different labels influence this valuation process. So we know that um, for healthy items, if they are labeled with a traffic light, uh, there's a green traffic light, the participants are willing to pay more. Yeah? And <clears throat> so what we did is to look at this brain activity here and looked how this is influenced by other parts of the brain. So this is what you call a connectivity analysis. So you can check of how this uh, brain region is influenced by other brain uh, areas dependent on the context. Yeah? <clears throat> so this is what we did. And this is a study um, by uh, Todd Hare, who did something pretty similar, which informed us before I'm not coming to, to our results. What they did uh, is to look at um, explicit attention shifts. They uh, instructed participants, uh, again, in a very similar choice setting, you know, where they uh, choose either for healthy items or unhealthy items, to take them or not. Uh, but they were instructed to either focus on the taste of the items, which we normal, what we normally do, yeah? or they should focus on the health of the items, the health consequences. Yeah? And when the subjects were uh, focusing on the health aspects of the items, they found an activity here in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which you could call as a self-control region for now. Yeah? Uh, and they found a higher activity there, which then modulated this activity here in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Yeah, so by applying self-control, yeah, it's possible to downvalue these, these uh, unhealthy items. Yeah? So our idea was now, does perhaps these, these salient labels do something similar implicitly? Yeah? Do they actually make you shift and uh, um, take more into account the health uh, aspects of the choice? And <clears throat> this is what we found. So we looked again. Here, uh, what I said already on the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, 
and this is more strongly influenced by this region that also Tom found in the study, um, when uh, the products were uh, labeled with a traffic light. Yeah? So it seems, but this is only an hypothesis here, that these traffic lights seem to shift the attention uh, more to the health aspect and make it more important uh, for the decision. And this is what we wanted to investigate more now uh, without function MRI, uh, but more looking at decision process uh, theories. <coughs> um, so what we did in the next step uh, is running a very similar experiment again, yeah, but having participants just sitting in, in front of a computer and not in a scanner, but making many, many more choices. Um, <coughs> so what they did here um, is participants uh, rated um, many different uh, products um, and then uh, they had to make choices between these products. Yeah, and they always had to make choices between healthy items and unhealthy items. But what we knew now for each choice was how much they liked it. Yeah? Um, so participants made here 350 choices, um, always between an healthy item and an unhealthy item. And so either these uh, items were labeled with traffic lights again, so making then choices between more green and more red items, or just with numeric information. Yeah, but uh, here also um, was information if this was a more healthy or less healthy item. Yeah. And participants made 350 choices, and afterwards, uh, again, we selected some uh, for real um, consequences. What we uh, made use uh, of now is um, a decision process model. And uh, on this, I have spent some seconds yeah, to explain this. So this, um, of course, we cannot observe really the processes that lead to the decision. Yeah? So we have to make a model of this decision. And um, there are uh, so-called sampling, uh, sequential sampling models, and one of them uh, is, is the so-called drift diffusion model. So the, the intuition behind that is um, that people start with a certain, um, yeah, certain level in, uh, in the decision process, and then they start to accumulate evidence for each of these choice uh, options. Yeah? So we have uh, here uh, a choice barrier yeah, for healthy choice and here for unhealthy choice. So when you are confronted with the decision, you are some, somewhere here in between. Yeah? And then you start to think about this decision. And then you're accumulating evidence for this one decision, uh, for this one option or for the other option. Um, and once you reach a threshold, for this decision, then you're going for that. And this is what you actually can, can measure then in the choice. So all of this in between is not really visible to us. Yeah, so this is estimated in this model yeah, uh, by using reaction times. Yeah. So there's um, this so-called drift rate, yeah, which is kind of the slope towards these boundaries. Yeah. So the steeper the slope to these boundaries, the faster you reach the threshold. Yeah. So the faster uh, you go for this decision. Um, <clears throat> or you can have uh, differences in the starting point. Yeah? And I illustrated this in, uh, in this uh, slide here, what our hypotheses were, or what, what could be a uh, competing hypothesis. So um, participants saw now these different labels, either traffic light or, again, American information. Uh, and what could happen uh, is that uh, here, uh, hypothesis one would be uh, that uh, the drift rate increases. So as, as soon as you have um, these traffic light signals, people are starting to accumulate evidence more for the healthy options in a faster way. Yeah? But what could also happen uh, is that just the starting point differs. Yeah? That you're starting because you see this, this traffic light signal, and you're just starting or shifting your, uh, your you have kind of a bias towards one of the other options. Yeah? And this you can actually disentangle by this uh, by looking at the estimation of these different model parameters. Um, I will not go into detail on that, don't worry. Yeah, but um, the, the idea is that you can, by just uh, integrating choices and reaction times, you can model this decision process. And this, has been, this is originally coming from um, uh, actually uh, visual uh, psychology, um, uh, where this is, has been done in the, in the 70s uh, by Radcliffe. 
So <laughs> when we look at uh, the behavior, uh, we find something that I've shown you before. So this is a different group of people, yeah, but they show the same behavior. Uh, that when we look, so here you find the probability of going for the healthy choice yeah, for the um, uh, numeric information over the traffic information. And this is increased for the traffic light signal. So again, if you present, and on average, these are the same items. And if you present them with this traffic light signal, people are more probable to go for the healthy item. So one, one thing uh, it is also plausible, but what we could check here, because we had so many choices and we knew the, the taste preferences of the participants, um, remember they always made a choice between two options, yeah, one healthy and one unhealthy item. And we knew the preference, the taste preference for these options. So you can make a choice between two items which you equally like, or you can make a choice between two options in which you dislike one yeah, and like the other one much more. So here on the left side, uh, people, uh, these are choices where the unhealthy item was preferred. Yeah? And on the right side, you see choices where the healthy item is preferred. And this is the probability for taking the healthy item. Yeah? Of course, if you have the healthy item you prefer, yeah, uh, then you're also more probable to take the healthy item. Anyway, and you don't have any dissonance in you. Yeah? And um, if you're going down here, if uh, people prefer the unhealthy item, they're also much more likely to go for the unhealthy item. So, but, uh, and here the, the dark, a bit darker line is now the line for choices of traffic lights, and uh, the other line is for the numeric information. And what you see is that this line is a bit shifted to the left. Yeah? So especially for items where the unhealthy item is preferred, actually, or they are equally liked, the integration of this traffic light signal compared to the numeric information makes people shift their, uh, their stated uh, choice um, more towards the healthy item. Yeah? So this makes perfect sense. Yeah? Now uh, what we can do, and I already suggested that, um, but you don't have to follow that now in detail, you can just leave me that, um, that um, now looking, uh, using this drift diffusion model, uh, we can estimate these different parameters uh, and test what in this choice process has actually changed. Yeah? And we uh, see that the starting point is not changed. Yeah? So there's no difference uh, or no bias just introduced into the choice by showing the signals. Um, but what has changed is actually the drift rate. Yeah? So um, participants are integrating evidence in a faster way for going through the healthy item uh, if it's labeled with a traffic light. Yeah. <clears throat> and what we then also did, and this is informed by, by a, a paper from, from uh, Ian Kreibich, who was a co-author on this paper, is that we could measure uh, or estimate um, the weight that people put on the taste and on the health attribute in each choice. Because we had information about the taste preference and about the health uh, of the items, and we could, for each choice, uh, measure how much people weight uh, the taste and health uh, attributes in choice. And what we see here is for dark, is again for the traffic light, that uh, the health uh, uh, information, the health attributes, get a stronger uh, weight in the decision, while the uh, taste attributes get uh, a lower weight in the decision process. So these, um, at, uh, these different labels actually uh, seem to change the weight of these different attributes in the choice. So, <clears throat> one thing that we then did, um, and this is now, now a bit of work in progress, is that we used an eye tracking uh, equipment um, to investigate another question, that is um, how, these trip, uh, how these different labels actually draw uh, attention, yeah? and how this uh, um, uh, uh, changes the choice. Yeah? Um, so the experiment is again very similar. The setup is a bit different because of the constraints of, of the eye tracker. Um, so there had to be more spaces here, and we also did some control experiments, which I, I'm not talking about now. Uh, but the basic idea is again the same. Yeah. So they had to make choices between healthy and unhealthy items. Again, either labeled with numeric information or traffic light information. Um, so if you look at the behavioral data, this looks identical. Yeah. 
Um, so people have a higher probability of going for the healthy choice under the traffic light. Yeah? And these are again different sample of people um, in a different experiment. So this, this seems to be very robust. Yeah? And here we had less choices here, so that's not as nice, but you still see the, uh, the same uh, effect. Yeah, that um, if they prefer the unhealthy item, uh, they go more for the unhealthy item, and if they prefer the healthy item, they're taking that anyway. And this is a bit shifted to the left by using these traffic light signals. So, <coughs> what we then uh, did, and what we were mainly interested in, is using this eye tracking data. And uh, we, we know uh, a lot already now uh, of the relation between uh, attention um, and choices people make. Yeah? So first, uh, we did some, some control checks. Yeah. Um, so the difference uh, between products, um, or the value of each product, doesn't predict whether people are uh, looking at first. Yeah. So independent of the, uh, of the rating of the product, um, this didn't have an effect, like, like an attention grab effect, or so the valuation of the product didn't, didn't influence um, actually the first fixation. Um, but what we also see, and this makes uh, perfect sense again, is the choices which are most difficult um, also required most attention. Yeah? So here, uh, this is the difference uh, between items. Yeah? And if the difference between items in, in taste preferences uh, zero, yeah, you had uh, the highest number of fixations. And if the difference uh, is stronger, then people needed less fixations to actually make a choice, which because the choice is simpler and this makes perfect sense. So, um, <coughs> now, um, if uh, you try to remember now this um, drift diffusion model, you know, and if this is true, this uh, provides some uh, assumptions, yeah, which we could test. Yeah? So, um, so it actually predicts yeah, that uh, people should choose the item more that they're looking at more. Yeah? Because they're accumulating evidence for the choice option while they're looking at that. Yeah? So, um, <coughs> so you should see uh, um, a relation between the, the, the fixation um, um, of uh, the product and um, the choice. Yeah? And when you, when you think of this boundary threshold, yeah, um, and people are making a decision while they're crossing this uh, threshold, um, they should at that point fixate on that item. Yeah? Uh, because then they are accumulating evidence for this item, and then they are uh, kind of going through this threshold. Yeah? So you should see uh, that uh, people are choosing the item more that they are actually fixating on at that moment. Yeah? And this is what we see. Yeah? So if the last fixation, yeah, so we split this up here for last fixation, if the last fixation is on the right item, then the probability of going for the right item is higher. So this is probability for choosing the left item. Yeah? So if they are fixating on the left item uh, as, as the last fixation of the trial, then it's more likely that they're choosing the left item and vice versa. And this doesn't matter between uh, the numeric information or the traffic light information. So this is true. People are choosing that with what they are looking at. Um, <clears throat> another interesting thing is uh, that at least in most, uh, um, in most languages, yeah, or in most cultures, uh, people are uh, looking from left to right. Yeah? So first, people are usually looking at the left side. Yeah? Um, so this should actually lead to uh, some kind of bias uh, in the decision. Yeah? Because you start to accumulate evidence first for the item that you look at first. Um, and this is, on average, the left item. Yeah? Um, oh, this is... Um, the wrong slide. So this is um, uh, actually the slide that I already told you before, that if you're looking more uh, at an item, it's, it's more likely that you choose it. Yeah? So more, the more you uh, fixate on an item, the more likely it is to choose. Um, and this is um, the um, choice bias in uh, first fixation. So people on average uh, fixate more on the left side, and this actually leads to a slight increase of probability of choosing the left item. Yeah? And <coughs> so here again is um, uh, probability of choosing the left item, and here is probability of looking at the left item first. This is only a, a, a small effect, but it's uh, significant. So 
Um, what this model now also predicts is that um, the uh, attributes that receive more attention should be weighted more in the choice process. Yeah? And <clears throat> so if you look more at the nutrition information, the health um, aspects of the information should be weighted more strongly in the decision, rather when you're looking less uh, at this nutrition information. Yeah, because the, the um, label doesn't have an inform, uh, information about the taste, but the product has information about taste. So if you fixate more on the, on the label, you should have a higher impact uh, of health. <coughs> and this is again what we see. Yeah? So here is probability of choosing the, uh, the healthy item, and here, the more you go to the right, uh, the more people are looking at the label in contrast to the product. Yeah? So the more people are looking at the label, the more they're likely to choose the healthy item. Yeah? And this is also true for in between people. Yeah? So people look more at the, at the nutrition labels uh, in contrast to the, uh, to the items are also making more healthy choices. Okay. This is something that I'm also pretty much interested in on, on individual differences. So what I wanted to show you um, is that these salient labels increase healthy choices. I think that's a pretty robust finding. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be um, that, is, that these nutrition labels um, somewhat <coughs> increase the evidence accumulation on the attribute weights um, for, uh, for the healthy items, for integrating um, health uh, in the decision. Um, and of course, looking time influences choices. This is something that we, we know now, uh, not only now, we know this for, for some time. Um, and um, this is also why, uh, uh, let's say, uh, brands or, or designs have such a strong influence uh, on choices, because they're grabbing attention and thereby leading to fixations which influence the choices people make. Yeah? So the gaze time uh, is actually pretty important. 